Hello, my name is Zarina Aishamarin and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to show you how to automate the process of mounting your file share to a virtual machine using Terraform and PowerShell. So before we get started, you need to ensure that you have Terraform installed locally onto your machine, unless you are using pipelines, and you will need to ensure that you have a storage account already created and a virtual machine already created as well. And just also make sure within your storage account, you already have a file share created too. Okay, so traditionally, how you would mount a file share is, well, Microsoft does make it easy for you. However, the process can be tedious depending on how many virtual machines um, that you have. So what you would do is go onto the portal and head over to your storage account and click on file shares. You would then click on your particular file share. So over here in the screenshot, we have a file share called testing. Now, if you click on that uh, file share and then click on connect, which is at the top, it will hit you with a um, dummy script. And that dummy script is um, the, the PowerShell that they've already created for you with the details already there for you to mount, to then take that and um, run it from your virtual machine, which you can see down below on the right in the gray box. You would then head over to your virtual machine and uh, run a script. So click on run PowerShell script because the script that they offer for the Windows machine is a PowerShell script. You would copy that and paste it within this box and click on run. Now that sounds great because they've already made the process for you. So, you know, it's all good. However, this can be tedious if you have <laughs> a lot of virtual machines. So one way to, um, to make life easier is to obviously automate this process. Now, I am going to show you how to do this using Terraform. So the first step would be to copy that PowerShell script that they have given you and open up a um, Notepad++ or you know a new file within Visual Studio Code and paste that within there. Now, what they haven't done is, well, what we are going to do by the way, is create a resource using Terraform, which is essentially a custom extension script. So whenever a virtual machine is created, what it will do is run this custom extension script on the virtual machine. And yes, that custom script will be this mount file share script. So in order to make that happen, we need to get uh, ensure that the PowerShell script is uh, prepared in a nice way to pass in variables depending on uh, which virtual machine you want um, this file share to mount to. So as you can see from line one to six, I have created a little param a parameter a block and I have passed in some variables and these variables will come from the Terraform script, which I'll show you later. So over here, we are passing in the file share name, the storage account, name so the file share name file share name would be testing the storage account name will be well the name of the storage account that holds that file share testing along with a key so this key would um the, yeah this key would be for access to this file share and then you have the drive letter so this could be the def i think the default drive letter would be the Z drive, but you have the ability to, the opportunity to pick whichever drive letter you want to um, select for this file share. Now, moving on, as you can see, line seven to 15 looks somewhat similar to the PowerShell uh, script that they've given us. The only difference is um, as you can see, I'm passing in those variables. So I've passed in the storage account name, and so it can connect within uh, using SMB. 
so port 445 and then it runs the if statement where it will um, save the password and then it will um, mount the drive so we passed in the drive letter again the storage account name and we have the key that we've passed in as well and all of these variables you can get from the portal but obviously we're automating the whole process so we go to use terraform to grab this information from the already created storage account so what you're going to want to do is take the script once it's saved as a file um uh, over here i've saved it as mount underscore disk dot ps1 and take that file and store it on a storage account so go find a storage account go go head over to a, create a container and within the container um, store store that file there and once you've stored that there you will need to generate a sas url so that we can publicly connect to that script okay so the last step is to create the Terraform resource for um, the custom script. So over here, I have an Azure um, virtual machine extension resource, and I have named it mount underscore disk. So it takes in the name. So this is the name of the custom script, you, uh, the, the extension, sorry, that you want to call it. And I've just called it um, mm disk. It, you could call it anything. And then I have a count because it's running for how many virtual machines I'm creating. And also it's dependent on a Boolean, um, which means do I want to mount this disk or not? Um, so yeah, anyway, so it takes in the virtual machine ID. So like I said, make sure you have a virtual machine already created. Now, there are two ways of pulling this out or any of this information. Either have dependencies, so you're creating these resources within your, um, your overall script, or if you created the, these resources as part of a different repository of code, then just pull them out using data blocks. So, yeah, you want to take and pass in the virtual machine ID, and then the publisher should be Microsoft.compute, type custom script extension, and type handler version 1.9. Now, a great way to ensure that you can get these details correct would be to, well, what I did was I created a resource within the portal, then I exported the ARM template, I looked at the JSON, and I looked at what fields were there and that was very helpful for me when I was creating this resource because some of the Terraform resources always point to AWS examples so that's a great way for you to ensure that you're passing in the right details and you don't get errors so okay within the settings area as you can see, I'm passing in a, um, a variable and that variable is the SAS URL. So remember I said to place the PowerShell script into a storage account and then generate a SAS and that would be um, what you need to access the script within the so when it runs this extension it will know to access this that powershell script and then it will run the command which is underneath command to execute and that's a powershell command and what it will do is pass in those variables into that script so over here like i said we are passing in the um, file share name, the storage account name, the key, so the key, the primary key of the file share, and the drive letter. So once this has been completed, you will, you can go to the virtual machine and click on extensions and you will see that your custom script extension has been created and you can see that the status has a provisioning a succeeded message 
alongside it and if you click on that and you can expand on the details say if you get an error you could just expand and you'll see what the error is and another way to also verify that this worked is to go back to running a command on the virtual machine so you could do this via the portal or just re remote desktop into the machine and open up a terminal and type ps hyphen drive and it will show you the drives and you should see if for example you are mounting a file share with the drive letter of z then you should see within the table the letter z which means that it has mounted that file share and also so another way is just go to that file share and drop in a file and yeah that's basically it i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions please let me know in the comments down below otherwise yeah please like subscribe and i will leave the code snippets on my github repository okay thanks bye